Playing Toll is often misunderstood in EU4 because the majority of the community actually thinks that Playing Toll is just having 5-4 provinces and just developing those provinces to infinity. That is not what Playing Toll is, boys. Playing Toll is making the most out of your provinces, regardless of how many you have. You can have 5 or you can have a thousand. What Playing Toll means is not limiting the size of your country, but making the most out of it. Building the right buildings in the right provinces, developing where when necessary and stacking up development reduction modifiers in order to develop more efficiently of course. There's more to it that we're going to talk about in this particular video as we go along because we will be making the ultimate playing toll custom nation and what better region to make that in than the amazing Dutch Netherlands. A perfect region because it has a lot of grasslands, farmlands and easy to develop provinces. It also starts with quite a little bit of significant development and it is in the English Channel node, the strongest trade node in the game, meaning that realistically speaking, you don't actually need to own too much provinces within the English Channel node in order to gain the majority of the trade from the English Channel node. With just the Dutch provinces themselves, you will get insanely rich as long as you have the right national ideas, which is where the custom nations come to effect. Let's go ahead and click custom nation. We're going to be making, I don't know, say uh, Liege our capital because Liege is a glass producing province, glass being one of the best trade goods in the game. That being said, it is not a farmland as far as I remember. I might be wrong actually. No, it's a forest. Yeah, it's a forest. So we're gonna have here the Belgian borders and we're also changing the color flag as well as the uh, information. We're essentially forming Belgium from 1444 and this Belgium is insanely strong because look at these juicy national ideas. All power cost instantly means that every single thing that costs mana points will be 10% cheaper, including developing provinces. Add up to that the fact that we also got development cost reduction minus 20% means we are going to be paying 30% less to develop provinces from the get-go. Development cost modifier also is a huge deal here, but we don't have enough uh, custom nation points to get this. Well, I guess we could just lower something else like say um, admin efficiency. We don't need that just yet. That's more important for when you want to blob out in the later part of the campaign. We also added a few decent military ideas like morale of armies, discipline, artillery fire, just so we have an easier time dealing with other nations nations, militarily speaking. Of course, the culture is going to be Dutch. We're actually going to stay Catholic and our tech group will stay Western. We could technically go Anatolian, which is the strongest military tech group early on in the campaign, but it wouldn't look very nice. I like the sprites that the uh, Polsteni units also have, so we're going to keep these bad boys here. We will be a duchy. We are a part of the HRE, so we cannot be a kingdom unless we are a uh, elector, an elector in the HRE. And we're also going to get the Polish autocratic monarchy for the extra reform progress growth as well as the manpower modifier that it offers. I've also had to lower my air and my consort's uh, mana points because I want to start with a 666, of course, Jean-Claude Van Damme, none other than the great Belgian master. I think he's Belgian. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's Belgian. <laughs> and take note, the reason I went with Dutch is because the initial province where you click your capital to be in, all the provinces of your country from that particular culture will change to your primary culture. Culture, meaning that because we made our primary culture Dutch, actually, you know what? Let's change it to Flemish now that I think about it because Flemish is the other side of our country, isn't it? There you go, Flemish. This way, all of our country is going to be Flemish, meaning we will not have any uh, problems with our culture, which is something that doesn't really apply to real life Belgium since it is one of the few countries divided in two separate cultures, the Flemish and the Wallonians. Wallonians being the French speaking and Flemish being the Dutch kind of speaking. I know they don't like me saying that Flemish speaking let's say which is of course a dialect of Dutch oh look at that beautiful sprite I absolutely love this sprite man I wish more of the sprites in this game actually had proper full plate armor would make it so much more interesting in my opinion check this out boys in our farmland provinces it's only 33 mana points to develop from the get-go we change over and we encourage development as well it goes down to 28 33 and 25 in the farmland provinces it is of course a little bit 
bit more in the other provinces for obvious reasons there you go so it's 42 in our capital 49 34 in the grasslands and 42 in the other forest i'm going to start encouraging development in all the provinces because i will be developing initially every single province now it's not the most optimal thing to do to be fair most optimal would be for me to uh, put the protect trade edict so i get more out of the trade in the uh, english channel because i don't really have that many provinces within the english channel to be fair so i will do a little bit of expansion i didn't take the entirety of the netherlands initially because i also want a little bit of a challenge but i will be conquering the rest of the netherlands so i get the provinces required to control most of the english channel plus the rest of the stuff is great land to develop as well at the start though a few of these provinces will belong to the uh, burgundian crown so until they become independent we're going to focus our attention on the provinces that are not a part of the burgundian crown such as gelre and of course we will be getting a claim on burgundy since we want to take some burgundian lands too interesting rivalries here okay well let's go for the burgundians the english and the danes for some reason fair enough let's see if we can get an alliance with the austrians that would be pretty good we can actually okay let's uh let's oh i actually forgot uh that was a mistake on my side forgot to get my alliances before i send off my diplomats forgot that i only have two diplomats as a duchy because we start with a six mana points leader we also have 126 admin points so we're gonna dev it up and by dev up i mean stab it up by one stability this way we get passive prosperity in our provinces you need one stability to start getting that passive prosperity there's a particular chance based on the monarch points power skills in our case we get 90 percent chance of getting prosperity every single month realistically speaking within a hundred and something months we should be getting prosperity in all three provinces and when that happens we get 10 percent dev cost reduction goods produce modifier plus 25 and autonomy change reduction all three of these modifiers are absolutely brilliant now let's give out the plus one mana points to get even more mana points for our amazing country check out our agenda see what exactly we can get here france opinion of us a hundred are the french actually on good terms with us they are oh wow okay Ooh. all right maybe i should not have allied the austrians actually Let's send our ships over to the English Channel and let's uh, sell off some of these heavy ships because I don't plan on uh, using them for anything. The cool part is that early on in the campaign, a lot of the nations around you that have an interest in uh, being a naval power will buy off those ships for 60 ducats or less. So also not forget to seize our crownlands, of course. Give out the religious diplomats so everybody that's Catholic in Europe loves us as well as the advisor cost reduction for all three of the estates here since we will be getting all three advisors. I'm also going to be disinherited my initial heirs mr vlad van dam because he is a zero 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 and after i disinherited him i'm gonna give out the um patronage of the arts getting 25 prestige because we have below zero prestige otherwise we'd be getting only 10 or 15 sorry now we still have issues with our loyalty equilibrium for all of the estates that's why we're giving out the supremacy over the crown and in the case of the burgers i'm also giving out the private trade fleets that increases the ship trade power from my uh trade ships oh check it out they're 45 percent cheaper because we also have the advisor cost reduction from our starting monarch here we do have a lot of fortifications that we don't need though so we're going to dismantle these two forts in the uh, farmland provinces we're going to keep the one in the forest here and the other one in the forest as well oh actually our cap oh wow we have three forts one next to the other that is a uh, overkill i'm going to delete two of these i'm, go I'm only going to keep the fort in the capital and i will be building another fortification in breda once i capture it i don't need too many forts right now and by deleting those forts i also made sure that we have have enough money to have a proper economy going now to boost that even more i am going to be developing provinces let me actually add these provinces to the hre because once the first reform passes we're gonna get an extra five percent dev cost reduction and construction cost uh, reduction in hre provinces so it affects only your provinces that are a part of the hre not all the provinces keep that in mind well i was a little bit wrong they're not paying me 60 ducats for my ships but better something than nothing right because we don't need those heavy ships right now they're pretty much useless it's a good idea to scroll around and see what countries offer you what some of them might offer you a lot more than the other ones and we can use the money we got from uh selling our ships to build more light ships go all the way up to max naval force limit hey the papal bull also offers us five percent dev cost reduction so let's go boys let's uh, develop our provinces for basically 26 or even 23 mana points from the absolute get-go let's uh try and get this up to 
I don't know, 20 development, let's say. There you go, 20 development in that one. And once I get more mana points, I'll develop every single province to 20 development first, and then even more after I get more mana points, of course. Oh, Aragorn wants an alliance with me. That's pretty cool. Sure, we can get an alliance with you boys. We might have some common enemies, let's say. The French would still ally me if I didn't ally the Aragonese or the Austrians. I also managed to get one more uh, extra diplomat from uh, getting my mission done, Imperial Ambition, which means that two countries are voting for me. That is the Palatinate and Trier. Oh, you know what? I can totally do that, man. I can totally try and gun for the Emperor ship now that I think about it. Let's get some more alliances with Kjoln, Say, and who else is here? Now we got a few nations supporting us. I am a little bit over my Diplo relation slots, though, so I'm actually going to cancel the uh, Aragonese alliance. Sorry, Aragon. That was a very short-lived alliance, like a second. Let's also get a Generalus and... Oh my god, that's actually pretty decent general right there, despite the fact that we only have 16 army tradition, so we got pretty lucky. It's a one star, but in my heart, it's a two star. It's a one star because, realistically speaking, maneuver is not as important as the other ones, but for me, what matters is the artillery pips and the shock pips in the early part of the campaign. Oh, really, Austria? Sure, I'll, I'll help you out. So they are at war with Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. All right, you guys come back to port because that might actually bite us in the arse, as they say. And I'm not going to really help out the Austrians. I'm just going to chill over here in my uh, little fortification and wait for the Danes to come at me because obviously I mainly want to focus on getting my uh, Dutch lands and of course also on developing my provinces too which begs the question why did I use up all of my mana points because I already know some of you are going to be asking why did you use your initial mana points on developing instead of just uh, waiting to get the tech before everybody else I will still get the tech before everybody else you know why I got a 666 leader and I'm getting plus one mana points from my uh, estate so I'm getting 11 mana points per month the only other nation that would be able to match up to me in that regards is the Ottomans that they have a 646 or Florence which can get a pretty decent leader which they didn't get right now apparently so there's like a 70% chance I will be the first one to unlock all of the technologies before anybody else even with me developing initially a few provinces and by developing those uh, provinces initially what also happened though is it increased my manpower it increased my land force limit it increased my economy so getting that extra boost from day one is going to make a big difference in the long run. I love to see that the Austrians and the company here are doing all the work as they should. Newborn daughter, 444. Okay, that's actually not bad, man. Let's uh, let's call her... Wait, 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 wait. Was the default name Fanny? What? All right, you know what? I'll keep it as Fanny if that's such a Flemish name. <laughs> and of course, the freaking Gelrians discovered my spy. Amazing. That means we got to turn our attention to the uh, Utrechtians instead and the Frisians, I guess. Let's go with Frisian spy network also. Even though we don't border them on land we do border them on a sea tile from here to here the same sea tile meaning i can get claims on friesland overstish and utrecht still and i know i'm explaining stuff a lot more in this particular video i just want to use it as a platform for explaining my every thought process essentially if you guys enjoy this kind of video consider leaving a like i might do another one similar to this with another unique custom nation once we get 8,000 likes and hey if you really enjoy the content consider subscribing i'm really trying to get to 200,000 subs and once that happens, I'm going to do a massive mega campaign starting from Imperator Rome, CK3, EU4, Vicky2, Hoi4, and Stellaris. So that's like 2,000 plus years of uh, mega campaign. All right, now we're also going to be changing over to Protect Trade. This I should have honestly done this from the beginning, and I should have only kept Encourage Development here since I really just developed these provinces. That was a Pepega move on my side. And time to get our first claim on Friesland, Nois. The Danes would actually accept the peace deal from me. How close are the Austrians in this war actually to piecing out? Not really close at all. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the white piece. I'm sorry, Austria. I love you and all, but there you go. We also were the first ones to get these two techs, meaning we got the uh, eight innovativeness, which means we also get all power cost minus 0 0.8. Once we reach 100 innovativeness, we get a 10% discount on every mana points that we use. So that's gonna be actually 20% if we include our starting national idea, meaning 20% cheaper idea cost, 20% cheaper tech cost 20% cheaper developing everything is going to be 20% cheaper and it looks like we can get the third idea first as well meaning we got 12 innovativeness already which is quite significant in the early campaign let's merge up our fleet here so we send all of these bad boys to protect the english channel node and we can also start our war against the frisians let's go go boom shakalaka might need to get some military access actually so that might be a little bit of an issue okay surprisingly gelre is giving me military access Fair enough, my boys. Let's uh, let's see if we can get all the way through Munster. We can. Nice. I got 
a corner, the boy. You're not going to run away. They be gone, Ski. Let's bring our boys back over. Actually, let's uh, go to Ditmartian with this army. So we've got a siege down Ditmartian too. We have been the military axis. And let's go. Gonna attack with no general. My general is busy sieging down the uh, other city. And uh, I have way more troops than them. So I should easily win this. Now, Renaissance has triggered. Keep in mind, guys. When Renaissance triggers, as long as you have 10 development in each one of your provinces, you will start passively getting Renaissance. Now, you can see on the map, for example, in Brandenburg, they have a lot of provinces below 10 development. So Renaissance is not passively going up there. There's a few other exceptions here. You can hover over here and it tells you what exactly is required for the spread, such as port capital, European 10 dev, with provinces in Flanders, Tuscany, and the Venetians area basically getting it even without having 10 development, which is not the case because Tuscany, Venice, and Florence already has more than 10 development in all of their provinces right actually i don't think the venetians have in all of their provinces let me double check that 10 11 12 yeah see they're getting it in padova even though it is nine development because of this specific here uh, modifier you can do that with all of the institutions to check why exactly you are or not getting the particular institution I'm just gonna ask him for some uh, trade power and that's about it maybe cancel arrival so we get a bit of extra prestige there you go we got nine prestige from that pretty decent now let's go back home if you're worried about aggressive expansion the easiest way to expand in the hre is by vassalizing nations however i don't care about it too much and i just want to directly own friesland because that's just how i roll okay don't judge me i'm gonna keep some of my units in the north on the uh newly conquered frisian lands and the rest over to my mainland let's also uh start coring these provinces up and let's get ready for the next war against Utrecht once we get the second claim on Utrecht. Let's try a second time to also get claims on Gelre which we failed the previous time. Since we already got access to our marketplaces and our churches I want to talk about this for a second here. So churches essentially are not really that great but there are certain exceptions. You don't really want to build churches if you have really low tax development but if you have say decent tax development from the get-go and you're getting 0.5 Point 20 0 0.19 ducats per month extra from building a church then it is actually worth it and if you really want this uh, extra building slot later down the line you can uh, remove the church and build something else instead of that but for me right now the churches are actually quite viable so i'm going to be building churches in all of my provinces with the exception of rizel maybe which is 0 0.11 so it's not really worth it same goes for the marketplaces i'm going to build everywhere where i'm getting above three trade power so that means uh bruges and uh i believe and Verpen as well is six. Whoa, Giri of Pomeray. What? Oh, no, that is no bueno, boys. <laughs> We're not allied to the Emperor anymore. Oh, this is really bad actually what yeah oh i also realized that i have a female so that's why nobody's voting for me anymore now because you need to enact uh pragmatic sanctions in order for a female to become the emperor of the hre and you can only do that when you are the emperor of the hre already all right time for the next war this time against utrecht let's go should be easy because they only have how many trips Four thousand units so it's basically a cakewalk i'm honestly more worried about the um aggressive expansion that i'm getting than i am about the actual war with these nations Hold up a second, my boy. The emperor just lost half of his country. Lusatia is independent. Poland took all of Silesia and Olomouc. So uh, I'm getting the feeling that our beloved emperor is not going to be able to protect us, meaning the empire might actually collapse down the line. 25 spy network in Burgundy or 10 diplo points. I don't care about the spy network. Uh, actually, no, I did need the spine at work. Uh, it's too late now. Whatever, man. Let's uh, let's do our peace deal here. Let's go ahead and fully annex these guys. Now, because I don't have an alliance with the Emperor, the problem is that I will start actually getting uh, the Emperor asking me for territory back. So maybe I really should just vassalize these guys now. Yeah, I'm going to bite my lip and I'm actually just going to vassalize them instead. Let's go with that. Let's actually go with that. Boom, shakalaka. Got our first vassal. Second one's going to be on the way because it's going to be Gelrenek. And I know what you're thinking, Ludi, you have such a great Dutch pronunciation. I know, I know, it's insane. Gallery! Because of my Scottish heritage, which I don't really have. Guess you could call it imaginary Scottish heritage. <laughs> All right, um, take up a Gelders and Dortmund, Brunswick. All right, I'm going to call in my allies in that case. Dortmund and the Brunswick, my allies can take care of. Let's also get another general. Oh, come on, really? 3-1. My army tradition is more now compared to before. This is just the reason why this game is so 
how Pepega sometimes, you know, the RNG really do be strong sometimes and weak other times. I feel like I may have um, overdone it with aggressive expansion. Just taking these few lands here is going to give me an extra 33 aggressive expansion. So I'm just going to take one province. I don't know. Upper Gelders, Gel they're pretty much the same thing, honestly. It's not much of a difference between the two. Actually, you know, we'll take Gelray simply so we have a connection between the entirety of the northern bits of our country. And coalition-wise, it's actually very few nations, not even noticeable. We will also be asking them to trade, transfer trade power, and we're going to be canceling some of their alliances in the hopes that somebody else is going to kill them off, basically. We can also be the first ones to get military tech uh, 5. So now we can get the men-at-arms, meaning we can also upgrade our units now. We're going to keep some of our diplomats on improving with outraged nations. Plus, the next bit, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to chill. We're going to wait for our aggressive expansion to go down, get new technologies, and once we have those new technologies we're going to be developing our provinces and building the right buildings in the right places because that's the main theme here of playing toll as this nation and like i said at the start of the video playing toll doesn't mean that i'm only going to have five provinces and develop those five provinces i'll get the provinces that i want meaning the netherlands here and develop and build the buildings in these provinces which eventually leads to me getting insanely huge amounts of income from these provinces hey we can even get our first reform done and i'm going to be going for the uh, extra manpower you're only as strong as your manpower pool as they say right wait what maximilian van damme when <laughs> I didn't even pay attention to this. When did the Austrians get my dynasty, dude? And their heirs of one half. Okay, I am so confused right now. Yeah, I'm not gonna enforce it. I don't care about a union with Austria. It's just weird to see. <laughs> Is that why they lost the Empress so early on? Must have been some event that happened that killed the heir or something, I guess. As our first military idea, we're gonna go for aristocratic ideas for a few reasons. First off, we got the death cost reduction here and manpower plus 15%. We also got army tradition decay, extra diplomats, which is gonna really help us out, and the general cost reduction and with trade ideas it offers an extra merchant and let's face it we do need to get trade ideas eventually as well as economic ideas because economic is going to offer the extra dev cost minus 10 percent I, I i probably will go for trade ideas before economic the meta has changed it's no longer quantity economic because the policy between the two has changed and because this particular custom nation that i made has a lot of dev cost reduction in its national ideas and efficiency it's worth going for the extra merchants to filter in more trade in our main trade node wait did i just build galleys oh my god i'm such an idiot i built galleys instead of light ships <laughs> oh time to sell these bad boys off and build some actual light ships the french really really want to be my ally don't they one of the main reasons you want to go for a military idea first before you go for an admin idea in most games is because military ideas are easier to unlock at the start admin points you're going to need to use for coring up stuff for increasing your stability lowering whatever same goes for diplo points you probably will need them for a lot of other things and even you can use them to develop provinces if you don't use them for other stuff so military points they're just there you're not doing anything with them you might as well use them for unlocking new military ideas and of course also at the same time stay in touch with your military technology don't fall behind but at the same time you don't necessarily need to rush military tech if it's just like a one military tech difference with your neighbors you can better off invest in your national ideas and this way you get much stronger as a nation from unlocking your military first oh hey look at that we just got the renaissance and rizel that's awesome it's actually really close to spawning in most places 93 percent okay i'm actually confused why is charles in charge of the country but also another charles is the heir do they not have any other names they can use in this country <laughs> that being said it's a little bit scary because charles being in control means that he could die at any moment and then france or austria gets this stuff so i'm gonna attack them and i'm gonna try and get some of the dutch provinces before that happens looks like we can call in most people in this war even the french we can call in the war if we promise to give them land it's a pretty sizable war for 1459 i'd say i like how uh, austria and france are rival to each other but they're fighting on the same side right now because of me i feel like the great negotiator which speaking of by the way belgium after the 1830 revolution after belgium became a country essentially um it did have 
have a predominantly neutral attitude in the affairs of Europe after its inception and it was known as the great negotiator let's say of uh, Europe for a while as a lot of the times conflicts were resolved by mediating via Belgium however at the same time it was also known as the battlefield at Europe because prior to its actual inception Belgium was where most of the conflicts happened between the Spanish the French the Germans the Dutch and I do say Spanish because in the 16 1500s the Spanish owned most of these via the um, vast Spanish Empire that they had you know Habsburgs go burr they make the chin they take the land that's the motto right there boys well who would have thought that having half of Europe fight against you means it's gonna be a fairly short war I did I thought that uh, now let's do this war here we're gonna take a few provinces for ourselves we're also actually gonna give these lands to the French because I kind of don't want to make the Austrians too strong if they are the ones oh sorry not the Austrians the Bohemians if they are the ones that are gonna get the um, inheritance right but hey on the bright side we got all of the Netherlands with the exception of Holland which is not really Belgium land let's face it and uh, what's left of Gelre so now it is biggest chilliest time as I like to call it oh my god come on I said biggest chilliest and that's when you declare war and you call me into your war for real Trier and of course they're sieging my lands down why would they not siege my lands instead of the actual person that attacked them lands right there you go arrivederci my friends okay check this out boys 19 mana points to develop again let's do it a few times i want to get up to uh 10 production development in all of my cloth provinces for that matter since cloth is a really valuable trade good so we did the same for bruges and let's actually do the same for uh Rizel, even though we're going up to 21 development it is a-okay i did get a lot of money also from uh selling some of my crown lands and i'm gonna use that to build up my workshops honestly guys workshops is one of the buildings that you want to have in every single one of your provinces because production income is going to scale up massively the longer you stay in your particular campaign so from mid to late game those workshops will be instead of giving you 0 0.1 they will give you probably one ducat per workshop in the late 1500s depending on how much you developed your provinces of course production development that is we managed to integrate utrecht and we got no diplo reputation hit because we gave out the uh, nobility integration policy privilege meaning that uh, we don't get that horrible event and it's going to be five percent faster to integrate our vassals plus the best part once you don't have any vassals or subjects this disappears and uh you just don't need to revoke it also so it's like a double win no brainer you need to have that privilege essentially and the northern bit the best location for a fort is actually overstish it's not utrecht since this is again a farmland even gelder is better for that matter but i'm gonna make one uh one fortification in overstish right here let's wait for a month there you go we got the money so we can build this bad boy also take note that whenever you integrate your subjects be it vassals or whatever they are it's gonna give 60 by default 60 autonomy in every province that your vassal had so lower the autonomy after you've integrated your subjects all right boys we managed to get faceting in the province of luck which i assume is uh where is luck where is luck i don't know where luck is okay for real where actually is luck <laughs> click f look oh it's my cap i knew that i knew it's my capital just testing to see if you know uh the prerequisites for this is basically renaissance 50 prestige i think you have to have a glass in that province so it changes to uh, gems and uh if i'm not mistaken 15 development and that's pretty much about it now guys i want to make something very clear whenever you have a lot of extra admin points lying around especially in a playing toll campaign it is a hundred percent worth it to expand infrastructure that gives a ton of benefits including trade power production goods produced dev cost reduction construction cost etc there is sadly a bug going on with this whenever you form a new country you lose your expand infrastructure this might be patched in the future but right now it's still sadly happening so keep that in mind but if you're not planning on forming any other country do this and use it as much as possible i'm going to start expanding infrastructure because i have a lot of admin points lying around in all of my provinces especially the high trade power provinces it is mega worth it i mean check it out once we expand infrastructure it goes from 40 to 27 to develop the private that is just ridiculous man so if we change this over and we oh we cannot even encourage development that's going to be like 23 or something like that and it's already been developed three times this province for example 
or better yet to look at this 21 development has been developed four times already and it's going to get even cheaper once we change the edict so i'm going to wait for that as well take note you can only expand infrastructure if you have 15 development for the first tier i think 30 development for the second expand uh 45 and so on basically every 15 development you can expand infrastructure i said before that workshops you want to have in every single province the same goes for the counting house whenever you get that same goes for courthouse and the upgraded town hall every single province you want to have that in same university every single province and then the barracks and the training fields also marketplace and their upgrades only in provinces that give significant trade power boosts taxation buildings if you have available extra building slots sure in provinces that give really high taxation bonus so really high tax development provinces and then manufacturers regular manufacturing in all provinces provinces with the exception of grain fish livestock and wine provinces in which you should have the soldier's household because the soldier's household gives double the amount of manpower from those particular trade good provinces and what i just said right there is everything you need to know about buildings essentially all right we managed to actually unlock the second national idea which is development cost modifier minus 20 percent this is so huge check it out boys 13 development in ghent and after we do this it is going to be nine development in ghent <laughs> in 1470 it is just mind-blowing man and we don't even have prosperity fully unlocked here so it's going to be even more once that happens so because of that we're going to bring every province we have to 25 development now oh i just realized look at uh Haino or Hegnug. It's four mana points to develop this bad boy. Check it out, man. That is just insane. Look at those modifiers there. So let's use up four mana points in this province now. <laughs> we went up to 23 development. We developed this eight times for like less than 100 mana points. This is just insane. I'm loving this campaign. I love playing Toll in this game a lot. That's why I highly recommend you guys use up these particular custom nation uh, national ideas if you plan on playing Toll. I would change some stuff though like i would change the morale of navies with uh, good produced modifier to increase the economy right and core creation cost i would change with something completely different because core creation cost is for expansion it's not necessarily for playing toll but i just put it there because if we do a second part for this campaign or if i stream this the second part live then i will likely start expanding after i've built up a playing toll nation in the first hundred years that's just how i roll in my particular campaigns oh brabant 15 production development sure we can do that let's uh change it over encourage development and 15 years say alrighty boys we got 15 we got some loyalty for the burgers and check out man building a barracks in ghent because of the manpower gives us a thousand manpower just from one province this is also a 29 development so let's bring it up to 30 development so we can expand it a second time and now 25 mana points to develop this province even though it's already at 30 development and it's been improved 12 times i love this i absolutely expand infrastructure is so insanely powerful it's just ridiculous if you're gonna stay as a small nation you know what we can actually start our golden era meaning that we get another old power cost minus 10 percent for 50 years meaning that it's going to be even cheaper to develop our provinces now so 21 mana points to develop the 30 development province of brabant is just wow big big wow moment meanwhile groningen here just chilling with another casual four mana points to develop so let's uh do it a favor and actually develop it a little bit there you go i've also obviously accepted both dutch and frisian as my uh, two accepted cultures aside the primary uh, Flemish culture. Now, when it comes to our tier three reforms, we're obviously going to go for the best one for playing toll, which is centralized monarchical bureaucracy, meaning that we get 50% of centralization of states refunded, as well as we get autonomy change reduction, culture conversion costs, etc., etc. Realistically speaking, progress growth modifier is pretty good too, because it means you can get the rest of the reforms a lot faster. So I'm a little bit torn between the two, but I'm going to use this one because I also want to show you guys how strong centralizing states is. Another feature that I know not many people use. Once we have 50 government progress, we'll be able to start centralizing and we're getting 25 of that back together with 25 admin points back. And every time we centralize, it offers maintenance minus 20% for that state, prosperity, passive growth, and local governing cost minus 20%. Realistically speaking, if you're playing tall, you're going to have a lot of development. You're going to have a lot of 
governing costs from that development. So building the courthouse, town halls, and centralizing your state means that you're going to get no governing capacity from your states almost. It's going to be like a base of one or something. So it's literally the meta for playing toll in this campaign. Well, in this game in general right now. Oh no, Austria is going to war with Ulm. Of course, we got to help him against the great Ulmium threat, boys. <laughs> in any case, man, I've had a lot of fun with this campaign, but I think I made my point when it comes to playing toll as the amazing nation of Belgium. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. And until the next time, check out this awesome Brandenburg into German Empire borders by 1515. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.